This could be very bad if it happens here. So guys, a lot of you know what happened in Russia, right? They had that attack that went down. And I found it interesting that probably a week prior to the attack, I was preparing a video about an imminent attack that the U.S. had warned Moscow, the Irish embassy, UK embassy, and maybe another embassy, I can't remember off the top of my head. But still, the United States warned them about this attack that was coming. So, of course, I'm reading the article about two weeks ago now, and I looked at the date, and from that date, it was five days prior. I'm like, well, hell, nothing happened between the imminent attack being reported back in like March 8th or 5th or something like that. So when I started doing research on it, I'm like, nothing went down, nothing's going to happen. Almost two weeks later, there goes an attack at a theater, right, an opera theater or some kind of theater in Russia, where 60 people died or so and 100 and something were injured. So, of course, guys, now I'm looking at this a little differently because I go back on my notes and I'm like, wait a minute, I wrote this, I was writing this article out to do, I was writing the video out, sorry, to do it. And when I saw that it was five days prior, I was like, well, it doesn't make sense. Nothing happened. But now something did happen. And in fact, it took two weeks or so for it to go down. Now, of course, the United States gave Moscow a heads up, but they also gave the Irish embassy and the UK embassy a heads up. And everybody was on pretty much high alert. But when the United States gave the heads up, they stated that there was going to be an attack, but they were focused on protesting. I guess there was a lot of protesting going on in Russia and that they were telling the UK to tell their people and the Irish to tell their people to stay away from large crowds and large venues, especially protests. So I thought that was a bit weird. Now, of course, being that the United States warned them about this and the Russians did nothing, there's two ways of looking at it. One way is that the Russians are so arrogant that they told the United States, we got this, don't worry about it, and then it went down or the United States implemented this. There's always two ways of looking at everything. I'm not saying the United States did it, and I'm not saying that the Russians' arrogance avoided it, though I can almost bet that they did. But what I'm doing is just staying in the middle and saying that that's two ways of looking at it. I'm not saying it was one way or the other. My personal opinion, that's different. But now this attack went down, and now, of course, the FBI is warning that such an attack can happen here. That's the bigger issue at hand because obviously, guys, if this happened and the FBI might be seeing something, they might have noticed something and gone, wait a minute. And also, not only did they notice something on that end, but we also have wide open borders. And with wide open borders, shit can get crazy. So many people on the ISIS side or other terror groups that can come through that those open floodgates. So, of course, now that the FBI was warning us actually a couple weeks ago about possible attacks because the floodgates are open, and then this happened in Russia a few days ago, now the FBI is stepping up their warning and probably stepping up their security. Maybe. Who knows? But they also beef up security around embassies when something like this happens. Pretty much, I don't think it's around the world, but I think it's the selected spots around the world, especially in Moscow. So, there's that. But... For this to happen here in the United States would be, I would say, eight times as worse. Because I think with a city like New York that's so big, there would be multiple attack locations. It just wouldn't be one. It wouldn't be just a theater. Plus, also, guys walking around with, not that they're walking around with AKs. I mean, they can easily hide them in a van, a moving truck, whatever it is, just their personal vehicles and get them into the city and wreak havoc. But I think they would do it like a Mumbai, a Mumbai style attack but it would take multiple locations and start wreaking havoc. And that, you'll get more than 60 people. You'll probably get hundreds of people dead if you did it in that fashion. Again, you hit the subway system, you hit the busy 42nd Street, 34th Street, you happen to stumble into a movie theater, you might go to, to the front of a play, a play that's letting people out, right? I mean, like, there, there's so many different styles that this can go down. I think for it to happen in cities like New York, you also have... California as well. You have San Francisco. You have Los Angeles where this can happen. You have bigger cities where you can initiate maximum damage 
on people, especially that these cities, we don't carry firearms for the most part. And a lot of people are in their own world. That's the other thing. People do not pay attention. I was on the rig today, fire truck. We're riding down the Webster Ave. And I'm looking around. No, not Webster Ave, 3rd Avenue, sorry. And I'm looking around, and everybody was on their phones. Just about everybody. I mean, everybody was looking down at their phones, walking like this. Typing, looking at videos, looking at videos while walking. So everybody's in their own world. They're disconnected from what's going on around them. Their head being on a swivel doesn't exist for a lot of people who are on their phone. I've watched people walk in the cars. I've actually knew of a, a chick who I worked with in EMS. She lost her son because of that way. I think he was paying attention to his phone. He walked into the side of a bus. He wanted to get killed. So there's, uh, there's totalities of people not paying attention and the effects it could have on them. And so now shit pops off inside of a city somewhere. You're hearing that gunshot, that, that ringing in, you know, in the air. You hear the AK sound or whatever they might be using ringing throughout the air. And at first you're like, what the hell is that? Where is that? You know? And then certain people like myself, police officers, will identify exactly what that is and know what's going down. And a lot of us in that case will run to it while people are running away. Now, I have a couple of tips as to what you should do should you end up in that situation. And one thing you should do is stay still and identify where the threat is coming from. There's nothing more frustrating and nothing more oh shit moment than when you run into the shooter, right? Or the shooters. So you have to identify where it's coming from and run opposite direction. That is not to say that they're not going to corral you in that direction and then there's a group of dudes waiting on the other end. So you also have to keep that in the back of your head. I tell people all the time, and I, I tell them now, you come into the city for whatever reason. First of all, you should try to avoid the city at all costs. With the congestion pricing and the crime and all those other cr try to avoid the city at all costs. But if you absolutely want to come, come strapped. Bring whatever you need to bring and screw the laws. Because the laws are not going to keep you out of the ground. The laws are not going to keep you safe. It doesn't work. It keeps nobody safe. Everybody's a victim out in the street. There are women getting punched in the face for no apparent reason. I watched a video of a guy who was standing in a corner like this as a chick was walking by. And as she got to about here, he jumped out and right hooked her in the face. One time. Broke her jaw. She had a shit wired shut. Another chick from white girl on on Instagram or TikTok, whatever, made a video how she just got punched in the head for no apparent reason. So the city is not safe. That whole, like, we're, we're a safe city. No, you're not. Absolutely not. People are getting pushed on the tracks. People are getting shot on the train. It's out of control. So if you're coming here, forget about the so-called safety. Keep yourself protected. Keep your family protected. And come here with something that's going to protect you. Mace is not going to work in that instant. And throwing a knife definitely is going to work. That saying, don't bring a knife to a gunfight, don't. You're not John Wick. You're not going to get this guy from, you know, 100 yards away with a knife throw. Don't do it. Bring something that's going to reach, right? So with that, guys, just keep your head on the swivel when you come to cities like New York. When you're in L.A., San Francisco, Detroit, keep your head on the swivel. Especially that things are going to start getting a lot more crazier the closer to the election we get. Keep your shit on the swivel. Keep your phone in your pocket. Keep your wallet in your front pocket. Make sure you move with a purpose. Don't start walking in the seat like, oh my God, look at those tall. Don't do that shit. Don't do it. Stay focused. Have a purpose. Get to point A to point B, and you'll be okay. But if you start wandering around like a wandering idiot, you're going to get rolled. Anyway, this is the Angry Prepper. Thank you for watching.